Hello everyone. This video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 9.2.3.6, Implementing Static and Dynamic NAT. This Packet Tracer Assignment is a part of the Cisco RNS Routing and Switching Essentials Version 6 Cisco Network and Academy Curriculum. Now, in this particular lab, <clears throat> we're going to configure Static NAT, which is mapping one address to one address all the time. And then we're going to do dynamic where we've got like a pool of addresses that several hosts can request a public address from. We're going to be doing both at the same time. Now, hopefully by now you've already completed the separate labs, configuring static NAT, configuring dynamic NAT, because it'll help you with this lab. Now, the first thing they have us do is configure the dynamic NAT. So we're going to set up a pool, okay, and it says with port address translation, all right? So we're going to configure um, our one uh, access list, all right? Remember, we got four steps to do with configuring dynamic NAT. We need to do um, an access list for the uh, correct networks, those devices to be able to access the pool. And then we have to bind the pool, or sorry, we have to set up the pool. What addresses can I pull from? And then we're going to bind the pool with that access control list. Then we're going to tell the router what's inside and what's outside. Okay, so let's first look at what is inside and what's outside. The way they have this lab, as you read it, this part is going to be inside. This part is going to be inside. And this over here is going to be inside because these are going to be requests and addresses. Okay, so this is going to be inside. This up here is going to be inside or private, right? And then this down here is going to be inside or private. Okay, this up here on the right side of our or to the upper right side, this is going to be outside or public. Okay, so we want to keep that in mind as we're doing our um, configurations. So we're going to go to R2 to configure this. And we're going to start out with a access control list again to access that pool that we'll set up in a minute. And it says we're going to allow the private address spaces 192.168.10.0.20.0 and 30.0. That's this network, this one down here, and this one over here to access our access control or our uh, IP NAT pool. So they want us to do a named standard one because it says they want to name it R2 NAT. So remember, our command for that is IP access list standard R2 NAT. Okay, then we'll just put permit 192.168.10.0. And once we use our wildcard, remember a slash 24 is 255.255.255.0. So the wildcard will be 0.0.0.255. Then we'll do permit 192.168.20.0. It's also a slash 24. So it should be the same wildcard. And then 30.0.0.0.255. That is, you know, also a slash 24. Okay. So that sets up our access control list. Okay. And you see we get one point out of eight down there. So now that we have that set up, we need to set up our pool. Our NAT pool is only going to use the first address in the 209.165.202.128 space. Now, let me open up Notepad really quickly. Think back to subnetting, all right, 209.165.202.128, a slash 30 subnet mask is the same thing as that, right? So that means we'll get that address and that one. So it spans from this. That's the network address. So I can't use that one. This is the broadcast address. So I can't use that one. So that leaves me two usable addresses in the middle. What it has me do is only use this first one. So it's only using one in the pool. So how is it a pool if I've only got one? Well, the way port address translation works, you notice it says PAT here, port address translation. A lot of your wireless routers use that already at home. What will happen is it will assign that same 209.165.202.129 address to everybody for the public address. Um, and then it will have like a colon 
after it each time, and then it'll have like a port number, right? That assigns it to a specific computer or program that is running on that computer, so it'll know where to send it once it gets inside your private network. So you don't have to worry about running out of addresses with this because you don't, right? So a lot of your uh, your wireless routers at home are doing this as it goes back and forth between like your private network, probably 192.168.1. something, and then whatever one address you get dynamically, you know, at random from your internet service provider. Most of the time you don't get more than one unless you pay for it. Okay. So when we do our command here, we're going to do IP NAT pool, and it wants us to name it R2 pool. Okay. And then we're going to do our starting address. We're just going to do that usable one, dot one twenty nine, and then it's going to have you do the end. We're going to do the exact same address again. So that's going to be the only one in the pool. Okay. So the starting and the ending is the usable one there. We're not going to do one twenty eight um, as the network address because um, again, you know, we could have did that like in our last lab, but because we only get this one, we got to go ahead and put in that usable one there. And we'll do netmask 255.255.255.252. Okay. So now we need to bind those two together. All right. So how do we bind them together? Well, um, it's IP NAT inside source list. And then we named our access control list a word instead of a number here. So it's R2NAT. Then we'll do pool. And then we're going to do our NAT pool, which was R2Pool. Okay. And then you see that word overload. That allows multiple devices to actually access that one address. If you don't put overload in there, once it assigns that address, this 129, once it makes that translation, that's the public address for, let's just say, PC1. It's not going to allow PC3 to access that same address. With overload, it'll allow that same address to be for PC3 and PC1. It's just, again, going to put that colon after the address and then put what port number it's using. So that's how port address translation works. Okay, so we got to put the word overload in there for it to work properly in a minute. Then it wants us to configure the NAT interfaces. So again, what's inside, what's outside? Well, we already kind of put that here. So let's remember what ports they are. This one for the outside is S010. So interface S010, IP NAT outside. Then we'll do interface S0 zero oh. I don't think you can see it there but it's s000 and s001 IP nat inside and interface s001 IP nat inside so that handles this one and that one this one here is interface fa01 or sorry fa00 IP NAT inside. Now you may be wondering like how can you tell which one is which or whatever. If you can't really tell when you hover your mouse over, remember you can do a show run and it will show you what IP addresses are assigned to these interfaces and you can kind of tell that way. So for instance if I do that I can see here FA01 doesn't have anything configured. FA00 has 20.1 you see that's part of that network, so that's probably that, that interface. Uh, S000, 10.1.1.2, that's probably a part of the 10.1.1.0 network, so that's that one. Uh, 001, 10.2.2.1, 10.2.2.0, that's that network address, so it's probably this one right here. And then lastly, 209.165.200.225, obviously that's up there, so that's 010, so that's outside. Okay, so that's kind of how I get that. Now, um, you could also hover your mouse over each one. The last thing we're going to do, because that handles uh, the port address translation, we want to create a static one, because remember when we did that a while ago, we said we had 129 and 130 were our usable address space here. Okay, So we save that 130 because it says the second address is used for static NAT later. And you can see that up over here in our label. We want to configure this as the inside address and this one as the outside address. So 
we're going to go here and we'll do IP NAT inside source static and we'll do 192.168.20.254 and we want to translate that to 209.165.202.130 okay so we're translating that to that all right that handles everything now if we go out and we do IP NAT or sorry show IP NAT translations we hit enter we see the static one we don't see anything else because we haven't actually went across our router with any traffic from a physical device. So it says from a web, <coughs> web browser, a PC1 or PC3, access the web page Cisco.pka. That's this web server over here. Okay, So PC1, Alright, wait, so wait a second, you might have to click go a couple times, it says welcome. Alright, now let's try that from PC3. Now remember, we've only got one address here possible, and if we go back and run this command again, alright, you see here that, that um, the address that we had for our outside, alright, we only had that 129 and the 130 right so now you see how address translation is working where it's putting that colon after the address we didn't have that before and it's allowing multiple devices to connect to that one address now if we do this again from PC3 it'll work even though we've only got one remember last time we ran out when we did our pool because we had three devices and two usable addresses but this time we only assign one address to the pool one usable address but we have two devices here so let's see if this will also work here. Cisco.pka, hit enter. It also worked. So we see that poor address translation is kind of overcoming our shortcoming that we had in our previous static NAT lab, okay? Or sorry, our dynamic NAT lab, all right? So you see it's putting a different um, port number after every single one, so it'll know which PC is which. Now it says from the web browser of PC4, access the local.pka. So that's accessing this one, right? So if we type in 209.165.202.130, whoops. All right, you see local.pka comes up. That's the outside address that PC4 is able to contact. So everything is working like it should. And again, IPNAT translations, you can see all of that at work. All right, and then you see down here, that's the last one at 130. That one's at work as well. So again, you can see everything working correctly. Um, we've got eight out of eight or 100 in this lab. So that concludes implementing static and dynamic NAT with poor address translation.